the Florida Department of Education filed a complaint against a teacher for inappropriate conduct because she showed her class a Disney movie. You know, for a group of people who've been saying that 1984 was a warning, not a guidebook, it sure seems like the right didn't take their own advice. Welcome to 2023, or as they say in Florida, 1984, where you can face disciplinary review for the crime of showing a child a Disney film. Now, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't amused by the Orwellian nightmare that is Florida, and that's mostly because I think conservatives who think they're owning the libs by letting puddin' fingers turn Florida into his little fiefdom fail to realize what happens when torture-loving authoritarians like DeSantis get rid of the people you all hate. They find new people to target, usually from their own supporters, in other words, conservatives. It's almost like the right didn't learn their lesson from the Tea Party and how that group turned on all the conservatives who put them into power, or how the Tea Party turned most of the country against the right to the point that the far left had to become stone-cold fucknuts before anyone would even give the right the time of day. I guess the second time's a charm, so who am I to stop the right from creating an authoritarian rod for their own backs? If you want to make it so any random Karen can concern troll the state's Department of Education, you can have it your way in a day. That's what happened to Jenna Barbie, a teacher in Florida. She committed the horrible atrocity of showing her class a Disney movie Strange World. That's the one that nobody saw because Disney didn't bother to advertise it, or as conservatives would say, it was woke. For committing the sin of showing this mediocre film, some right-wing Karen filed a complaint against Jenna, and the FDE sent her a letter informing her that, quote, Following receipt of a complaint, this office has determined an investigation is warranted into allegations that you engaged in inappropriate conduct. That's not me making fun of this. That's what it actually says. Inappropriate. How did you misspell inappropriate? Any word processor would catch this. Do you know how many red lines are in this script? Even with my glasses off, I can see them. It says everything you need to know about the current state of Florida that Il Duce's cronies in the Florida Department of Education can't spell. So, this made the rounds on social media because one of Jenna's friends spread the news, saying, quote, My friend showed Disney's Strange World in the Florida classroom, and one student reported it to their parents. Now she's under investigation by the state. Florida is not safe for teachers. Do not move here. When was Florida ever safe for teachers? Florida ranks 42 out of all 50 states in terms of education. The state is notorious for its poor support of teachers, low salaries, low school funding, and violence against students and staff. Who would move to Florida to teach? But on a broader level, why would you move to a place where the people who live there and run the state hate you and advertise as the selling point for their state that you're not welcome? I know some people like a challenge, but there are easier ways to get your wrist taking rocks off. Dude's tweet got lots of responses, and to no one's surprise, conservatives defended the investigation. Keep in mind, at this point, there was no info other than Carl's tweet and the letter. But when you have a narrative, you don't need anything like evidence. You just need to be anti-woke. That's how you get stupid comments like one guy saying that the teacher broke the law, so that's why she was in trouble. To which Carl responded that his friend had, quote, signed permission from every parent in the classroom to show Disney and DreamWorks movies in class, even offering lines to specify specific movies parents didn't want shown. Not one exception was written down. And that may be true. But it doesn't matter. You're acting like you're arguing with rational people. You're not. You're arguing with ideologues. Nothing you say is going to change their minds. They already have a narrative, and they're not budging no matter what comes out. Like Jenna Barbie making a public statement on TikTok explaining what happened. Hi, my name is Jenna Barbie. I'm the teacher that is under investigation with the Florida Department of Education for indoctrination for showing a Disney movie. How the situation came to be, our students had standardized testing all morning. So some students didn't finish. So in the afternoon, part of my students who didn't finish went to a different teacher's classroom and she split her kids amongst the other fifth grade teachers. So due to the fact that they spent their morning state standardized testing, uh, I had a lot of students not in my room who typically are, and I had another teacher students in my room, I thought it would be a great time to give them a brain break by showing a movie that related to what we were learning about in school. Other fifth grade classes did this as well. So I wanna bring up the issue that I'm in trouble for. I was told by every teacher and mentor at our school that our method for approval by administration of showing movies was to have a signed parent permission slip for PG movies. I had that from the beginning of the year. The whole fifth grade team had signed permission slips for PG movies with no objections to specific content. Um, I actually had one student who did have objection to specific content 
not showing the Buzz Lightyear movie, but she wasn't in my classroom anymore, so it wasn't a big deal. So there we have it. She had signed permission from parents to show any Disney film, and the one kid whose parents objected wasn't even in the class when the film was shown. Now, is that going to change the minds of conservatives who are convinced that Jenna was trying to indoctrinate children into some leftist agenda? No, nothing is going to get through that level of stupid, but that doesn't mean they're not wrong. She wasn't trying to violate anybody's parental rights or brainwash kids. She was just showing them a mediocre movie. It's a miracle any of them stayed awake long enough to remember anything about it to rat her out. Like I said in my review, Strange World is aggressively mid. It grabs you by the collar and shouts, do you know how boring I am? I'm going to make you have the deepest sleep you had in years. If there was any complaint to file, it should have been about picking this boring movie. But that's not why the Karen filed a complaint. This is why. Uh, the reason I was turned in is because one of the split students was a school board member's daughter. That school board member is currently on a rampage to get rid of every form of representation out of our schools. She even spent days this past week going to all the high schools to get rid of anything that had to do with representation whatsoever. She even had admin escort her to a teacher's classroom that had a sticker of a black hand and a white hand holding hands and the white hand had a different color fingernail for every finger. So Karen hates race mixing and rainbows. Who could have seen that coming? The only thing missing from this scenario is a daily prayer calendar and her claims of being a good Christian woman. Of course this woman is going on a rampage to get rid of degenerate things like depictions of racial equality. If moral busybodies were fried chicken, the Christian right would be the original recipe. That bias is finger licking good. And I know some conservatives are going to try to defend this, by all means go ahead. I'd like to see you do it without sounding like you walked out of 1963. Meanwhile, Jenna's situation gets more retarded. So the school board member called the Department of Education on me for indoctrination before ever coming to our school to talk with me or admin about the situation. When she did come to our school, she came as a school board member and our principal said, no, you can come as a concerned parent, but then you need to schedule a meeting. So she did. She came and later that day and admin was in and out of my room, pulled me out, la da da. And we had a meeting and I understood her perspective that, okay, she really doesn't want this shown at her house. I I never saw that perspective before, so I didn't think it was a big deal. But seeing how upset she was, I told her I, I understand my lesson. She understood her lesson. Like she's being re-educated in a struggle session. For years, conservatives have complained about this very thing being done by the left. But once y'all got another taste of power, it's funny how quickly y'all went to using the same tactics. It's almost like you say you believe things you don't actually believe and then do the opposite of what you just said. Speaking of hypocrites. Come to find out, she had already reported me and there was nothing she can do about it. Pretending to be reasonable while trying to stab someone in the back. Classy. So here's a basic question. Why did Jenna show this film? It's a movie that bombed and nobody seems to like it. So why show this movie? So I chose this movie because it relates to our curriculum. Our unit at the time was earth science and ecosystems and how they interact, plants, humans, animals. So this movie is perfect. My thought process was what a better way to showcase all these standards along with huge lessons of overcoming differences, spreading kindness, communication, and chasing your dreams. A lot of which were in our, are in our social emotional Florida best standards as well. I mean, technically the movie does do that. It's just you might not realize it because you're bored out of your mind. It's just not a good movie. I get more in depth about the problems with the film in my review, so you can just watch that. But in general, if you want a movie to teach kids about the ecosystem and how everything's connected and overcoming differences, just show them Fern Gully. It's a better film in every way. No one should have to suffer through Strange World. Of course, that's not the reason conservatives hate the movie. They hate it because it's pushing the gay agenda, which it actually doesn't do, as Jenna explains. Is a character in the movie LGBTQ? Absolutely. Is that why I showed it? No. I have a lot of fifth grade students who have come to me this year, long before showing this movie, talking about how they're part of that community as well. And it's not a big deal to me. So I just said, okay, that's awesome. Do you. Um, not pushing anything, just being accepting. That's what I do. Um, does that have anything to do with why I showed it? Not in the slightest. The LGBTQ aspect uh, of the movie, they're harmless. It's just a talked about crush and it's only a couple lines in total scene time of just over two minutes. The parents in the movie kiss a lot <laughs> and that wasn't even brought up. Like I said in my review, there is no not so secret global homo agenda in the movie. Ethan and Diazzo don't have sex, they don't kiss, they don't even hug. 
The closest they ever get is when their shoulders touch when they're leaning on a fence. Ethan isn't defined by his sexuality. He's defined by his character, not that there's much of it there. This is what conservatives said they wanted. If they claim the movie is woke just because it has a gay character, then that would mean that when they said they didn't have a problem with gay characters, or people, they were, and I want to make sure I'm using the proper words, full of shit, which they're now tripping over themselves to prove. And here's the thing. The right seems to think this anti-gay, anti-trans tactic is going to work out for them, but it probably won't. And the people they hurt are not going to forgive, and they're not going to forget. And there's going to come a point when you're going to want something from gay and trans people, kind of like when you want something from black folks and Hispanics. You're going to look up and shout, save us, vote for us, buy our stuff. And the alphabet people will lean over and whisper, hey, fuck you. Kind of like the kids in Jenna's class. I also want to bring up a fact that none of my students cared or batted an eye. They didn't even know this was a big deal until the board member and the state made it a big deal. They're using it against me, saying they're protecting the children and it's for their safety. But what is this actually showing them? Their teacher showed a movie to help them connect to our curriculum and learn some valuable life lessons. But the minor representations that have nothing to do with the movie are such a big deal that now admin is in their room, pulling their teacher out, calling the students one by one down to the office to interrogate them in the middle of my lessons. Yeah, that doesn't sound the least bit Orwellian. Not at all. You're pulling the woman out of class to question her about showing a Disney movie. The right is so wrapped up in their kooky ass politics that they think a Disney movie is a threat to children. So much so that they have to question the children to find out what the evil teacher did to them. This is straight out of the satanic panic of the 80s. It's literally the same tactics and reasoning. But what's truly ironic is that those kids were questioned without their parents' permission or their parents' consent. And now there is an investigator from the Florida Department of Education coming to pull my students out of class again to investigate them individually. And by the way, they don't even have to have a signed parent permission slip for that. Uh, this investigator is allowed to come and pull them out and a letter got sent home to some of the students, but I doubt a lot of my parents are even going to get it. And if they don't call and object, the interrogator is allowed to just pull them out. Remember, this is Florida, where they're so concerned about schools doing things without parents' knowledge that they pass parental rights laws requiring schools to inform parents of the most minor things, but then conveniently created loopholes that allow the state and its officials to question children without parents' knowledge or consent. I will repeat that. The state of Florida passed laws protecting parental rights and then added loopholes to allow the state to ignore those parental rights. They can pull your kid out of class and question them about whatever they want. And under the law, they don't have to tell you they did it or get your permission. My question to conservatives isn't whether they would defend this law. Obviously, they will. No, my question is whether you knew that was the law. Did you know the state could do this? You didn't. Didn't you read the bill? Things like this is why you don't put authoritarians into power. You keep thinking they're only going to target your enemies. Oh no, they're going to target you too. And they're going to use your own hatred and biases to do it right under your noses and even get you to praise them for doing it. And by the time you realize what they've done, it's too late. There are more conservatives who will support this than oppose it. And the only chance you have of undoing it is to get the support of the people you've been calling pedophiles because they're left of center. So they're not going to back you. So you're shit out of luck. Kind of like Jenna. This is the public education system where students from all backgrounds, cultures, and religions are welcomed and should be celebrated and represented. It's also Florida, a current Republican and conservative stronghold, two groups who aren't known for their willingness to welcome people who are different from them. In a perfect world, yes, everyone would be welcome. But you don't live in Star Trek. You live in Florida, a place where they pride themselves on bragging about who they're keeping out. So stop acting surprised. I am not and never would indoctrinate anyone to follow my beliefs. I will, however, always be a safe person to come to that spreads the message of kindness, positivity, and compassion for everyone. That is the key to the safety for our children. That is the key message that everyone needs to find in their heart and understand. Baby girl, they don't care. You don't hate who they told you to hate. As far as the right is concerned, that makes you a groomer. They don't just think that you're trying to indoctrinate children. They think you're trying to molest them. It doesn't matter that you're not doing that. They have a narrative and they're going to stick to it. So you can sit there and say you're not indoctrinating kids all you want. They're just going to take that as proof that you're in denial. 
This is why you don't try to reason with ideologues. Instead, you use their own tactics against them. They want to file complaints? File complaints against them. You're going to have more to work with because the right loves shoving their politics and especially their religion down other people's throats. They'll bitch and moan, calling it an attack on their faith and values, but you'll only be following the laws and rules that they passed. This is the standard that they want, so apply their own standard to them. They're not going to like it. That's the point. The whole point of fighting back against bullies is that you actually have to fight back. If you just sit there and take it, the bullies won't stop. Most bullies are cowards, so if you stand up to them, they'll back down. And for the ones who don't, well, there's nothing a good ass whooping won't fix. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.